Islanders, welcome back to another boat related video. 2024 brings plenty of upgrades for me and my adventures. And in today's video, I've got every accessory that I'm gonna use this year connected to the boat. So if you're interested in Gucciing these things out, this might be an interesting video. I've got a brand new engine on zero hours, which I've got to start the braking process. So I'm hoping to get out there while the weather's good. We had cyclonic winds this morning, but it seems to have dropped down. Right, let's go and check this boat out, shall we? As you can see, it's got a million accessories and bits and bobs bolted to it, which I'll show you everything. Everything's linked below as well. Okay, first things first, the boat is a Boat World Carbon Pro Mark 1. I. I think they might be up to the Mark 2 or the Mark 3 now. Fully inflatable, as you can see underneath. The hull is inflatable, unlike a rib, which is rigid fiberglass. You'll notice a brand new trailer here as well. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Okay, so. Let's get to the money, the business end. Brand new, 20 horsepower, Tohatsu, four stroke, electronic fuel injection. Most of my videos, when I had the 9.8, which was on carbs, Tohatsu, you always heard me say it was underpowered. So I went for a 20. I think a 15 would have been great as well. But once this is run in, I'm expecting us to get some pretty good speeds out of this. I got 14 knots out of the 9.8. Because it was on carbs, it used to cut out on idling but this should be sweet. I've literally just fitted a tiny tack hour meter to it, which showing 0.0. .0. Again, everything's linked below. In my opinion, the best transom wheels, C-Max Deluxe 4x4. They're robust. They've done a year now and they're still looking pretty good. Just while we're down here, there's my Railblazer transducer mount with the Garmin transducer. I don't get much wash off the engine. Well, I never did with the 9.8, so it will be interesting to see how that goes. This engine is manual start. I never went for the electric start. This here is the most asked about piece of equipment I own. It's a Barica Fast 10 mount. Now all the kit from Boat World, which this is, the first link in description, Airborne Pirates, will give you 5% off all this sort of kit. Anything you see here that's from Boat World, you'll get 5% off and it helps the channel. Okay, just at the top there, we've got a Railblazer anchor light because I do like camping. Rod holders, there's my rod. Setup that's good for shark fishing, not that I've caught one yet. Moving on, we've got the aerial drone, which I bring with me on every adventure. I've got free diving equipment, just keep my weights and fins normally at the back of the boat. Now you'll see I've got a battery box there and it's absolutely huge. That I bought by mistake thinking it was smaller, but for longer adventures, overnighters, multi-day, that'll be great because I can put my accessories, etc., to it. And as you can see here, this here is my smaller battery box. That I made myself with an SAE connection and a 12 volt for using the electronic pump to pump up the boat. Now there's my life jacket, personal uh, locator beacon. I'm going to do a separate video on small boat safety at sea because I feel like I'm in a good position to do that and I've got lots of kit that you might be interested in. Right, moving on around the boat, a couple of uh, mad accessories. This here is my underwater submarine capable of going 100 meters underwater. Uh, now with the camera on, it's really cool. I did a full rebuild on that, replaced every motor and the battery. If you're thinking of buying one of these, don't buy one, they are so unreliable. This here is the jetpack, you've probably seen it before. Two thrusters that can prevail me in the water for about three meters a second. Fuel tank, uh, this here by the way, this here is just a seat bag. I bought this from AliExpress, it's really good quality. Quite pleased with it so far. I've got a compass here. Especially if the weather comes in, it's good to know you're heading. Okay, now these we've got Barica mounts everywhere, and you'll see I've also got Railblazer ones. These tops are interchangeable, that's just another connection to it. Uh, obviously, these are standard with all inflatables. This is the aluminium deck boat, by the way, which is great for stability. Working my way around, standard Tahatsu fuel tank. I have mine quite up the front of the boat. Boat World Bow Bag. I store various bits and bobs in there and then I have my anchor at the front as you can see she's weathered all right considering now this anchor for anyone who's interested is a two and a half kilogram grapnel boat anchor kit three meter chain and 150 foot of eight mil rope and it's worked wonders I'll talk about anchoring etc when we do our uh, safety video 
I quite like this bow bag, like I mentioned. Barica drinks holder. I do take this off because it gets in the way when you're rowing, but it is quite useful. Now you'll see this here, this is my Garmin Striker 7 SV, I think. And this has got an integrated kit with a battery in, but I never really liked it because it slides around a lot. So that's why I've put the Railblazer mount on here and I've got the fish finder mount lock. So I can put my fish finder here and put my battery in either this one or that one. Standard VHF radio. I always keep a dive knife handy. I think I've covered everything. Oh yeah, just at the back of the boat. This here is just my transom saver, which I got from Amazon. So when I'm transporting the boat on the trailer, I can take the strain off the engine onto the trailer. There's plenty of uh, pictures of how to use those. And then these are the straps that I use, the ratchet straps. None of this is sponsored, by the way. I think I've covered everything. This, by the way, for filmmakers, this Coco Tat Levitation PFD is really good. Got loads of pockets. I think it's a kayaking one. I don't actually know where I bought it. I think I bought it locally, so I might not have a link for that. Then going around here, that's just a free diving thing. So if I anchor the boat off and I'm in areas with other boats, I'll bring that with me and free dive off it. Just a standard net for fish. This here is my boarding ladder. So there's, there's various types, but essentially this boarding ladder, you just tie off either to the front or whatever the side. I've not actually tried it. And then you can climb back on. Makes it a lot easier. There's some pretty good Barica ones, which are quite hard, which I'd like to try where you put the mounts on and it comes off like an actual ladder. So this is my trailer. It's an extreme EXT inflatable. So basically it's a bunked trailer, but the inflatable one doesn't have the rollers. It comes with a jockey wheel. It could take a boat up to 255 kilograms in weight. The trailer itself weighs about 95 kilograms. It's fully adjustable. It's got the eight inch wheels with seal bearings. You can see it's got fully carpeted bunks. It's 3.8 meters long, 1.57 meters wide. And it's got a thousand pound winch, which is plenty for what I'm doing. So yeah, I can dip this in or, that's not how I would winch it by the way. I've just done that for the sake of uh, filming. Jason from uh, Real Isle, he's got a really good trailer as well. So I think coming up in his channel, we'll do a trailer comparison. And uh, yeah, there's my other boat. That's the Cat Sport 330. That thing with that 20 horsepower engine will be insane. Uh, that was really fast when we tried it out. I was really impressed. Anyway, it's raining. The sea's looking lovely. It's time to get out, try this engine out. So I've just taken out quite a few of the accessories because we're just going to go out, try and break the engine in. Conditions look pretty good. It's actually 7 p.m. at night in April. So I've got about just over an hour of daylight left. Considering there were cyclonic winds like six hours ago, it's turned into an absolute glass out. Check the weather forecasts in various apps, etc. So I know we're good. One thing I didn't show you earlier on is the camera mount on the front, as you can see, it's just a railblazer camera mount, and I've got a 360 camera on there, which is quite good for getting shots when you're not always looking because you can reframe them afterwards if you miss something. But yeah, I think we'll head over to Garwick. I'm varying the revs. Because there's a 10 hour running period on this engine, for the first two hours, I'm not allowed to go above half revs. So it says try to vary the revs in that period, so don't just leave it at half revs, etc. So should be good there. Hour meter that I fitted should be handy for keeping track on that because I want longevity out of this engine. Right, let's go cruising. See behind me, there will be a bit of weather coming in long after I get out of the water. So yeah, first uh, real sib video 
of the year. New engine, trailer. I'm really buzzing about the trailer because it's going to give me so many opportunities to just dart around the island. I'm going to leave this fully inflated now, sat on the trailer. Now I bought a bunked trailer as opposed to Jason from the Real Isles roller style trailer because for me personally it's more about just transporting it to the place and saving me time inflating. I mean inflating to be fair probably takes with the alley floor about 25 minutes for me. Uh, there's probably a lot faster people than me doing it. But yeah just if you get an opportunity you can dart straight out especially having the landy as well now I can get out in uh, places that would otherwise be inaccessible. Yeah so I'm really pleased with that. This 20 horsepower engine even on half throttle is uh, smoother and probably reaching similar speeds to what the uh, 9.8 was getting. It's a nice, probably two, two foot swell right now, lovely conditions. Gutted I didn't bring the fishing rod, but like I say, we're losing daylight and my prime objective is running the engine in. I haven't tightened that A-frame up very well, it's quite bent. Let's go take a look over at the beach where I camped on my last outing on this boat, where I nearly lost the drone flying into a tree. <laughs> that was a good laugh. It's so reassuring every time I uh, put it back to idle that my engine doesn't cut out. My 9.8 used to do that quite often, and it was. It only had like 20 hours. It was well fettled. Yeah, there's that beach behind me, Garwick, that I camped on. Cracking spot. So upcoming on the channel. And then what I'll do is I'll leave the video here, guys, because I just want to concentrate on running the engine in. We've got a safety video coming up, small boat safety, all the gear that I recommend, some of the gear you might not have heard of. Certainly my individual first aid kit's probably a bit unusual. Flares. PLBs, you name it. It's going to be a good video of that. And also, I wouldn't mind showing, obviously, I just showed the kill cord, with Jason on board, going at some pace, lock, lock it straight, and I'll just jump out the boat and see what it's like, see how effective, with the drone above, it is at stopping the boat. So I think that could be quite interesting. We're going to do wreck finding, hopefully, with the underwater submarine, various tope fishing, and uh, just explore this island that I live on, that's, that I love. Love showcasing, it's a beautiful place. There's those yacht moorings behind me that I free dived off once. Anyone who comes over here, Garwick yacht moorings, do not free dive off them. I got sick for a couple of days after that. Turns out there's a raw sewage pipe here. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. This frame is pretty good, I like it. Some fishermen don't like the frame so much because they say it stops them fishing off the back of the boat, which I can see. But um, I'm more of a free diving from the boat, camping from the boat, having a go at fishing. I'm not a great fisherman and anyone will know that, who knows me. Right, I'm going to cane it around the bay a bit more and just enjoy myself. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for watching my video and I'll see you again in the future.